Welcome back and thank you very much indeed for your time. The Ghanaian Times this morning reports that uh, Majority Leader decries monetization of electoral process Cosmos Energy inaugurates Innovation Center for Incubation Hub. Vice President launches one-stop job center for youth employment and IGP interdicts two cops over torture of suspects. CJ scolds judges, magistrates over thank you money for judicial staff. That's the uh, paper that we have. Now, we'll, we'll introduce my guest and then introduce the rest of the uh, dailies to you. My guest this morning, the Honorable Alas Ansuin, is the MP for Tamale North. He's also running for a second term. And Nanada Mwa, who speaks on behalf of the NPP as well. Gentlemen, good morning. Welcome. How are we doing? Morning. Uh, Alaji, how, how is it going? Well, alhamdulillah. Mm. It's terrific. We give God the glory. Mm. Mm. How is your morning too? Well, solid. Uh, well, we're trying. Anna, how's it going? By the grace of God. So far, so good. Everything, everything on point. By the grace of God. I see. There, there seem to be a lot uh -huh. of talk about the CSE on on social media. People have done short videos to say, well, what the minister said is not correct because we can actually point to page nine, page eleven, page XSI. I, and show you that it is in there. What what does the government say in response to these comments? First of all, good morning. Good morning to your listeners as well. I think that we need to um, be very critical and understand that education in this country is not taken lightly at all. Mm. And it is even based on that and evidenced by the pres president's pers uh, personal commitment mm -hmm. to ensuring that we have not only access to good education, but quality education as well, that he has introduced a free SHS policy among other interventions to ensure that the people of Ghana actually get the best that they can out of education. As, as is requisite in all such um, measures, it is critical to um, know that there is an approval process for these things to go through. It is not that I and Adama wish that there should be, let's say, football mm -hmm. as part of the curriculum of this country. And so I wake up tomorrow and then mm -hmm. I start doing whatever it is that I want. And before you realize, um, football is part of the curriculum of this country. There is a deliberate, very well thought out process and mm -hmm. a framework mm -hmm. of ensuring that before something gets to be a part of our curriculum, it has gone through these processes. I've seen those documents that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. but what I can speak to clearly and definitively is that the presence or the presence of CSE in those documents doesn't mean that it's been approved for it to, to, uh, to be taught in the various schools. That's not, that's not true. That's the curriculum for 2019. You can check the documents. That the teachers have. You can check the documents clearly. And I'll, I'll point out to you, I'll take out some, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm speaking about okay. very soon. Mm. But the fact is that, yes, some bodies have moved for CSC to be approved in Ghana. Mm. I think that it hasn't finished going through all the requisite processes. Okay. And the minister has been clear mm. that as we speak, there has been no approval whatsoever for that. Okay. And I can see where the doubt for officialdom is coming from because in times past, um, we've been told quite a couple of things under previous administrations mm -hmm. that have turned mm -hmm. out to be palpably false mm -hmm. as we've gone through it. So, uh, clearly, there, there is that disbelief for, for, for officialdom when mm -hmm. it comes up. But the reality is that it has not been approved mm -hmm. and government will take steps to ensure that the Ghanaian culture is protected no matter what. So, any You've, you've also, I'm sure you've seen uh, the, the back and forth uh, earlier statement made in January of 2019 by the Minister for Education. Subsequently, the day before yesterday, he made a comment uh, that Nana has reiterated. But there are people who are showing videos and photos that, look, it is in there. We, we have seen it. What do you say? Well, um, let me... Nana says we should not toy with our children's education, by the way. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me say good morning to our viewers, especially the very good people of the Tamale North constituency. And uh, Johnny, you see, the cluelessness of this government is not as disappointing as its dishonesty. Its level of dishonesty. I mean, we know that things are done in such ways that leaves you wondering if these people in charge of our country really knew what was at stake when they sought the mandate of the people. The cluelessness just hits you everywhere. But it is not as disappointing mm -hmm. as even the level of dishonesty. They attempt, to, they attempt to make us all feel very stupid for want of a better way. Who is making us feel that way? I mean... In the face of evidence, 
that is incontrovertible, you still find an attempt to propagandize and to spin mm. and to make us, you know, feel stupid, like I said. I mean, for example, the Minister of Education, you have clearly pointed out, is on video, not even voice, where you will think that someone is imitating him. He's on video, stating categorically early this year that this was going to be part of our curriculum mm. for the next academic, you know, calendar. Beyond the video, mm. this was also again in the budget of 2019. Right. And you have seen evidence of that. Mm. I don't need to show it here, but anyone who has a copy of the 2019 budget will see the comprehensive sex education as it was captured mm. and intended to be implemented the next academic year. Now, the minister was categorical in his latest press you know, uh, conference mm. that the CSE was not even part of the training manual right. that they use for the training of the teachers. 152,000. 152,000. Mm. Now, that, again, has been proven to be falsehood. Because clearly, the manual that was used contains that. You also even have resource persons from the GES who have granted interviews. Of late, they have shied away, indicating how they were contracted to undertake some training programs for staff of GES on the same subject. So, in the face of all of this, when you when you when you still listen to government's posturing that is not reconciliatory that is not suggestive of remorse but that suggests of arrogance that suggests of you know super intelligence over all of us then it becomes a little disappointing it's it becomes quite provocative and that is why i think i agree with you know, the moral society, for example, who are saying that perhaps it has come, it has gotten to a point where we should, as a people, mm -hmm. demonstrate our level of anger about what is going on. You are not calling for chaos, are you? No. The chaos is not the only way to demonstrate your anger. We should, we should let the government feel the anger in the system how in a manner that will hopefully mm. make them set up how i mean some people are calling for demonstrations friend paul manso mm. who is uh, i think the secretary for the presbyterian right yeah right. he's calling for a demonstration that those are some of the manifestations of anger mm. that hopefully can make a government that is not as intransigent as the one that we have mm. set up Okay, so uh, Reverend Professor uh, Emmanuel Asante, the chairman of the National Peace Council, has been speaking on this subject matter. We'll take his uh, cue now. We'll return. I'm sure now we'll have a minute or two to, to wrap up and then we'll move on. Take a look at Prof. There are agents of socialization. Family, the school, the media. We never end going through the process of socialization. So the training of a child begins from the home. The parents have responsibility to educate their children on sexuality. Unfortunately, our culture frowns on that. And we think that we shouldn't be talking about that. But let us talk about it in a way that we think will be beneficial to the child. When we come to education, my advice it's not simply saying we don't want this, we don't want that. The comprehensive thing that we will talk about will be a comp comprehensive in the sense that it reflects our culture, our morality, our religious values, but it also takes into consideration the fact that we live in a global community. So let us in a measured manner try and help our children 
the education should not just be an education that will be given to children, but even to adults on how to help their own little ones. The very Reverend Professor Emmanuel Asante there is the Chairman of the National Peace Council and a staunch member of the Methodist Church of Ghana. Nana, so this is what Prof says, uh, and you have heard Suhinis as well. I've seen the inclusion of the sexuality education uh, thing in the budget. I've seen the, uh, a copy of a curriculum that the teachers presently have, which has been, which has been in use. Um, I've heard Dr. Jinapo of NACA say this has not come before them. So he's wondering why it's made its way there. I've heard Dr. Clementa Park, who is deputy ranking member of the Education Committee in Parliament, say they've not been consulted on this, and yet it finds itself there. All the evidence so far points to the fact that there's a certain direction that government is going with this. And you say it is not there. The minister say it is not there. So are we reading the wrong script? If clearly the minister who has the who is who has the responsibility for education says that look it has not been approved, then it has not been approved. Secondly, secondly Are we in the process to get it <clears throat> approved? I cannot speak to that. What I know is that it is not approved at this moment. We when, can, when, so when the when the minister sorry about that. So when the minister met the stakeholders in January, he was speaking a policy position of government to stakeholders and he said it will take full effect in September. Um, and then my key question that will flow from that is, if we don't know if it will be approved or not, what are the guidelines meant for? The critical thing for us, and it's, it's interesting that you bring this question up, because year in, year out, um, when, when the media does a review of policies and everything, they intend to highlight, okay. or they tend to highlight what government has promised and has not been achieved. Mm -hmm. So for us now to have a discussion about what the minister said in a video and mm -hmm. what the minister has said elsewhere, and among other things, what is important for all of us here today and now is that it has not been approved and i would want anybody so what is the guideline for the guidelines that have been again like because I said, we know that the, to develop a curriculum you need the guidelines to help you develop it so if it's not been approved why did we, we speak, spend money to print the guidelines? As, as, as we speak now do we have um an approved curriculum for cse can you contradict the minister by saying that there's an approved curriculum for CSE. There are elements of it in, in uh, one that is shown. You I, have said, I wish you that have they said, play, they you play have the said video there are elements us. of it. Mm. That's all you have said so far. Mm. And you've, you've gone around it you know, quite eloquently. Mm. But the point I'm asking is, can anyone say that this document is the curriculum mm. for CSE? That's why I'm saying so, that. So you're, you are looking for a stand-alone I'm uh, saying that curriculum, but if I'm it's included. That, I'm saying that mm. the minister has said, and indeed, all the things you can you have said mm -hmm. just points to snippet that may be or it should have been. Mm. But no one can sit and say clearly, categorically, that this has been approved. So what is and the, the guideline? Minister, what is the guideline and for? The minister, I want to know. I, I and want the to minister, learn. Unfortunately, what is the guideline? I cannot for? speak to that okay. for you. But what I can say is that it is not approved. Mm. And as we speak, nobody can give any incontrovertible evidence that indeed the minister told a lie when he stood before the people of Ghana and said that it has not been approved. Okay. Let us not, let R us not. Wrap up for me. Clearly, thank oh, you. Oh, let us one. not butt heads over this. And for, for example, when I speak of um, sanitation, that it is also in the guidelines you're talking about, or there's road safety awareness. Mm. Can you tell me that all of these elements are fully in there? And so um, these are ideas that have been put together into a document. Mm. I'm not going to butt heads with anybody over the meaning of these terms or otherwise, right? Again, I would also sound a note of caution mm. that there is this attempt mm. to unnecessarily propagandize almost everything that comes out in this country. So, for example, you saw this attempt to present other documentation that this was the guide. This was the guideline mm. for sec some of them were coming from reproductive health documentation and that had nothing to do with the Ministry of Education among others, just to create a sense of fear and panic that this government was about to do their undue. I'm also surprised that. And is I, it, I, not, I is want, it not correct that Barbara, want, Barbara AC Asha, then Deputy Minister for Education? Uh, was part of the active launch never, of this, and and that PPAG is viewed also by the GS as a partner. Well, you are not aware. If, see, 
I'm not aware, but if she was a part of it, that is a PPA document. Now, the mischief we should address mm -hmm. is how some individuals would want to take documents that do not belong to the Ministry of Energy, uh, sorry, the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. or GS or in, and seek to present it as such, okay. with the sole aim mm -hmm. of seeking to create a certain confusion in the public domain that government is going to do something untoward or unworthy. Okay, that for me for is me. something that we need to address and address categorically okay the critical thing for us is that this government has shown a clear commitment mm. to education in this country we have shown that we are committed to doing everything we can okay. to ensure that every Ghanaian citizen mm. has the best of education that he can get and that commitment is incontrovertible it is proven beyond reasonable that and mm. we should con continue to concentrate on that let's not allow elements that want to create this sense of confusion okay you know, the they, the people Johnny. within the the space where children play uh they say look the government should just apologize and stop being unapologetic and running around and trying to be overly defensive what do you say no, no, quickly. Um, view, it is a democracy. Views are, are welcome. And this is a very democratic government that we have. Um, on all issues, everybody's allowed to express their opinion. They have also expressed their opinion. I would want to, if I had the opportunity, I'd want to interrogate them based on the facts that they have, which has made them come out to such The things. government did no wrong. Um, that's why I said that those who are making that decision. No, I'm asking you now. Well, I'm the, saying. The government did no wrong. I am saying that you've questioned me based on. Um, a document or, mm. or, or something that you so it's have. It's an opinion. An opinion that you have heard, which I haven't heard. Mm. But again, I'm saying that I would want to interrogate okay. what the basis of that decision is so we can move forward. Did the government do wrong in this instance? Present to in me what you the, think the government did In terms did of wrong. the communication. Well, I think that an admission has come. I, I'm not very sure who from where they are saying that, and I'm not sure that it was the ministry that gave that admission, but I think it was one of the bodies under the Ministry of, 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 of Education that said that they got it wrong in terms of their stakeholder engagement, among other things, which is very critical, because indeed, if they had laid out the, the processes and then had consulted widely for everybody to understand what was happening, this whole confusion wouldn't have come. Could the minister have trumpeted this small voice uh, apologizing and Which, saying we got it wrong with the stakeholder engagement. This confusion wouldn't have come. That's the first one. Okay. And the second one is that we wouldn't have even created the Could opportunity. Could the minister have trumpeted this small voice I was, into I was, a big one? I was, I was, I was, I was know, on a you trend. Know, you know, I've given you three chances. I, no, but okay. I, was on a, I was on a trend answering okay. a particular question, okay. which is that then you would under, then you know all of this confusion would have come and most importantly we wouldn't have given a chance to confucianist anarchist elements that want to create Could confusion the minister have trumpeted this small voice into a loud one well you see from a small for the minister to a big for one. the minister to have done that is is to um i don't know if the creation of that perception that it is a the, ministry... The minister is not a, a, a technical education person. So, if so the technocrats the are bodies, apologizing... So the bodies so that... the technocrats on. are apologizing, so, it, shouldn't so, the minister so, take a cue so, from no, it? So the bodies that are responsible for, 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 for these things have come out to say themselves. It is like saying that in the energy sector, for instance, the NPA is responsible for downstream activities. Recently, um, we have had about $976 million dollars, sorry, saved from... Um, our activities, anti-smuggling activities. Mm. Now, that is something that the NCA itself has gone out there to trumpet as part mm. of the CBOD's um, activities in the annual industry report. Now, if there is a mistake there, you would expect that the NPA will come out to explain those issues. But, but, if, it but, becomes, but if it see, becomes a policy matter, but see, then it is translated the MP, to the ministry. The NPA works to the Minister for I uh, agree. The Energy. But if they make There's a mistake... These technocrats who have apologized mm -hmm. or said we got it wrong with our stakeholder engagement work to the minister. Yes. And I'm asking you a very simple question. Mm -hmm. Should the minister or could the minister have trumpeted this uh, noble apology, honest or modest apology, and made it a big one like it would make for announcement of free SE chairs? Of I, think that, I think that what has happened is enough. I think that the people and this principle of getting people to be accountable for what they are doing is what we are following. If you do work and you realize that you have made a mistake, let's not encourage this culture where everything has to be pushed up upstairs because of ultimate responsibility, which we agree with. However, if mistakes are made at certain levels, mm. let it be shown that clearly the mistake occurred at this level. Okay. If not, if not, then everything that happens in this country should be blamed on the president. Okay. Nobody else should be held accountable. Thank you. You know, so you, you know, Johnny, I wish it were true that 
we have a democratic government that allows everybody to express their opinions. You're, you're sitting here. But my former radio station, Radio Gold, is still shut. Muntie FM is still shut. XYZ is still shut. And we all know how critical those platforms were of government. But that's just by the way. Um, you see, this whole matter mm. is not about communication. Mm. It's not about a failure of communication. It's not about whether it could have mm. or should have been communicated appropriately. Mm -hmm. This whole matter relates to an existential threat to our morals and values as a society. And there's no way that you can communicate around that threat. Okay. So it's not about whether it could have been packaged better, whether stakeholder engagements could have been better. It is about that threat it poses to our moral fiber as a people and our religious beliefs. Could somebody have smuggled this into, into the curriculum to be printed? You see, maybe it for is, lack of supervision. It is, it, is, it is not, that's why I'm saying that the cluelessness is not as hurtful mm. as the dishonesty. When government talks about approval, what really are they suggesting when communicators say it's not been approved? You have a material mm. that has been approved to be used for the training mm. of teachers on a new curriculum. And in that material, mm. on page 11, you have comprehensive sex education. Yet, government and its communicators are still bold enough to tell us it has not been approved. Maybe you are reading the wrong script. Beyond that, okay, mm. if that is wrong, you have the 2019 budget, like I stated. Mm. I'll just quote for you what is captured under paragraph 369 mm. of the 2019 budget. Okay. It says, Mr. Speaker, the National Population Council, in collaboration with other stakeholders, developed guidelines on comprehensive sexual mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. CSE, mm -hmm. for incorporation into the national education curriculum. Okay. Now, this document mm. was presented to the August House of Parliament on behalf of the President of the Republic of Ghana and approved by the Parliament of Ghana. Approved. So what approvals are they talking about? Because the budget of 2019 was approved by, by no less an institution, mm. but by the majority of members in the parliament of Ghana. Did the minority read red, flag, red flags? The point I'm making mm. to you is that when government talks of approvals, mm. remember the 2019 budget mm. is, 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 is a request okay. by the president. Exactly. With and so cabinet. it went through cabinet and then got to parliament where a number of issues mm were raised so you are by saying the minority. that approval has already been given. It's been given. So when they say there's been no approval, you don't get it. And that's why I'm saying that the cluelessness is not as hurtful as the dishonesty. So I'm asking also it's, that... It's, now, it now, makes... Now, it's now, as now, if we are so stupid as a people... Now that we have agreed... It can be spinned around. You, you have agreed that there's tacit approval for everything. I'm asking, did the minority raise a red flag when they saw this in the budget or maybe gloss over it? Or you didn't see it. The what point, the it? point, the point I made in address of that. It, I mean, to address that is, you have a document okay. that has gone through all the processes mm. from the presidency mm. to the ministry mm. to parliament. Now I can admit that it is such a voluminous document, mm. and we have so many, you know, I, I mean, so few days okay. to deal with all the issues that come up. And sometimes, to be, to be honest, because it is a financial document, mm. you find out that concentration seems to be more on the financials, Figures. you know, that are contained in it. And this perhaps may have escaped many members, given the short time that mm. we had to debate this matter. Mm. But the point... I am making here is that let the government stop digging okay. when they are in a pit. Let them begin to backtrack okay. and say that, look, the, the, we, we started on a very wrong note. Mm. Nobody 
says that sex education is unimportant. Okay. But you see, this particular matter is not even about sex education. It's about sexuality education. Okay. And there is a distinction between sex education and sexuality education. Okay. We need to get that straight. Check sex education off. at the appropriate age levels. Mm -hmm. You know, it's done even at home. You know, and even in school. Mm -hmm. Even though it may not be part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you, don't, you don't present this matter as an issue that can be communicated around in the way that it has been presented. When mm -hmm. it is a threat, as it has been composed to our moral and, you know, uh, 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 faith, as uh, our morality and faith as mm. a people. Mm. Look, there have been okay. evidence again. Okay, thank you. There, we, need, we, need evidence, to, we need to switch. Evidence, we need to switch now. I think again, I've afforded yes. both no, of you no, time. No, I don't think, I don't okay. think, I don't this, think, this I don't evidence, think, but let me, let me, let me land on it. Let me land on that. I mean, it won't be fair to leave me hanging. No, but I've, I've, no, I've started a point. So let me just land on that. You see, so, so maybe I won't go there again, but let me just say that, look, the, 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 the tragedy of this is that it is happening at a time that we are destroying, you know, bungalows at very prime areas, mm. expensive bungalows of judges at very prime areas to put up a cathedral. And at a time that we have removed religious and moral education from our, uh, 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 you know, curriculum. What's the correlation? How do you build a cathedral mm. in honor of God and remove religious and moral education from the curriculum and replace it with comprehensive sexuality education? Okay, you created a triangle. Well, you watching us from home, what do you think of that triangle? 0202166633. But uh, page 17 of the Ghanaian Times says, the majority leader decries monetization, monetization, I beg your pardon, of electoral process. Said the Minister for uh, Parliamentary Affairs, Mr. Osei Chime Saponsu, has accused the two major political parties, the NPP and the NDC, of being major corporates in the monetization of the country's electoral processes. According to him, Parliament, as an arm of government and the country's democracy, could suffer a jolt if the trend continued, stressing that the situation has reached alarming proportions and the growing trend of monetization in the country's electoral processes has not only reached alarming proportions, but the situation has reached the levels of a national crisis, he emphasized. He, he spoke at the press conference. Uh, I don't know if the back end has the, uh, the teaser ready to, to toss in. If not, then we'll just begin the conversation. Uh, I'll start with you now on this one. This subject keeps coming up, especially closer to every election year. And I'm not surprised that, that no less a person than a majority leader is talking about this. He seems to be feeling the pinch and be looking ahead and seeing that, look, if we don't take care, we will just elect people who are rich, who have nothing upstairs to go and be making laws for all of us. And that's dangerous. I have listened Did he speak to, truth? Well, I've listened to um, Professor... PLO Lumumba, for okay. example, mm. speak about the realities of these things and how he went on a campaign to um, <clears throat> express his ideas and hold a couple of town hall meetings and how he lost the elections terribly at that point in time. Um, I'm not sure what exactly the majority leader is driving at, but I think what is critical, what has become obvious is that in the last couple of days, we have seen that... Um, Politics has uh, become mm. quite monetized. Um, um, you know, in, in 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 particularly the elections of a political party that mm. we saw quite a lot of things. It says both the NDC and the MPP. I'm That's what the majority leader says. There's both the NDC and the MPP are I'm major not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not challenging that. Okay. All I'm saying is that what is before me, what I know factually, okay. Okay. is that in the elections of a political party, mm. it became quite a big issue where we had two or more aspirants coming out after the elections to say boldly that indeed some individuals had taken um, some actions that led to the grounding of these. Some, somebody shared a car, somebody shared cars and withdrew their cars 
at the recent orphan constituency primary. I so haven't, I haven't heard of that. It was I'm all over saying, in the papers. I haven't heard of that. It's, impo like it's, it's interesting how you see some things and you don't see some things. <laughs> well, Very I'm saying that I haven't heard My of that. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that I haven't heard of that. What I'm saying is that, so it is obvious that indeed it's a threat, it's a challenge, mm. and we need to deal with it. I, I would want the political scientists to advise us on how best to look at these matters because um, so many here is, is, is going to contest. Let him mm. tell us also his experiences in these things. But I think the citizenry also need to pay a bit more attention to how these issues are done mm. because I, I, I am not, um, I'm not occupying a purely political position okay. in, in where I sit at the ministry. Mm. But day in and day out, the kind of calls that you are inundated with and the kind of demands that are made to you um, are quite serious. From school fees to operations to almost everything that you can mm. think about, to, to stoves, to, mm. to all of that. And if that becomes the case, then the play of, of or the place of political actors mm. becomes quite an endangered species where you need to be able to satisfy all of these demands okay. before you can you know, actually have access to the political power that we seek. And once that happens, you know, the clientelism and the, you know, all of that becomes a serious matter in our politics. So I agree with the majority leader to an extent. Let us all as a, a society begin to think critically mm. about what we are doing on, on this particular matter. Society will take a cue from the political parties. The question is, are the political parties willing to, to play by this? Because I remember that in the run-up to the 2016 election, only the PPP was the party who could submit their audited accounts before June or July, the deadline that the Electoral Commission said. Both the NDC and the MPP failed to do that. What I can tell you, to however, is that the to MPP, present, failed you've, to present you've picked it. one year. Mm. You've picked one year. But if you look at the trend, mm. multi, multi years, the MPP has been very, very, But very, I'm saying that per that one, they, both the see, NDC and the MPP that's, that's, should have been disqualified from no, the 2016 no. election. That's why I'm saying that you are being a bit, you know, I understand your analysis, but it's a bit unfair. Because if you look at the trend over that okay. period, okay. what becomes obvious then is that... Chal um, the NPP, I can speak for the NPP because okay. I'm a member of the NPP, mm -hmm. has been very, very apt okay. in submitting these reports as we speak of. But look, mm -hmm. let's not deceive ourselves. I'm just, I'm just reporting what the Electoral Commission said. That's well, all. let's not deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. The reality is that there's a problem that we need to deal with. And if we do not find a way of dealing with it, it becomes a problem. Okay. I also think that it is a bit problematic mm -hmm. for us to concentrate a lot on the political parties themselves. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, political parties, per what they do, are mm -hmm. supposed to reflect the wills and the desires of the people, per okay. what they do. Okay. This may be a very controversial statement that I have made, but we need it to look at it. It is very controversial. So you are saying that, the, what, if you had a financier... I who will come later demanding for jobs I'm saying that, I haven't that said, he doesn't qualify for I haven't said, contracts? I haven't said any such thing. All I'm saying is that, okay. look, take a look at the primaries, for example, that was dealt with. Mm. We have two uh, aspirants who came out to say that there were several demands that were made by delegates and some uh, contestants who mm. eventually won made those monies available. I do not think that at that level, it was the political parties that were mm. giving those monies to influence that play. Mm. It was on an individual level. So if you look at it from giving that... It in the name of the party. I do not think that it was given in the name of the party because at that level, it is an individual that is seeking to occupy a position within the party. Okay. So it cannot be on, that... On the ticket of the party. So I am now seeking to represent the party. I am not the party. Okay. So it is therefore wrong to assume that it is the party <clears throat> that is doing such thing, even at that level. If you take that approach and look at it from the bottom up, mm -hmm. you would realize that it starts from a certain point at the individual and moves up and then ultimately culminates in the party kind of uh, but, but approach. If, if you are the individual contesting and you are feeding the party people with money, uh, the delegates who are also party people with money and your ultimate goal is to get there in the interest of the party under the banner of the colors, colors of the party, then you are doing this in the subtle interest uh, 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 name of the party. You see, that, I, 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 I have a problem with because, that. Because, for example, if we all agree that it should not be monetized and somebody is trying to monetize it, a general secretary should, for example, pick up the call and uh, phone and say, stop that. That is not what we're saying. The three of us here mm. are going to run for a position. The technical crew here are the delegates that we are speaking to. Right. Now, I have decided that I'm not going to 
you know, do anything. So when I meet them, it's just water that I give. Right. You have decided that, well, you have enough money, so you're going to give them NASCO mobile phones. Mm -hmm. Honorable has decided that he has money, so he's going to share um, iPhones and then, mm -hmm. you know, give them cash mm -hmm. and other, other, other incentives. Right? I like the way you do the distribution. <laughs> <laughs> so at that level, is it the political Surprisingly, party? Surprisingly, you are the one with the iPhone. Oh, but I can see two iPhones, and so I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I don't think that's a fair representation when you say that I am the one with the iPhone, surprisingly, and I can see quite a very good phone there. But that aside, clearly, at that level, I do not think there is a political party that is forcing us to do that. Mm -hmm. These are individual decisions that we have taken okay. to do that. And that's why I am advocating that. Let's look at it from the bottom up. Bottom up approach. It is Wait. those individuals that are seeking mm -hmm political power or representation mm. that are throwing those things out there. Okay. And then Great. from then onwards, look, Let, if you really gave money, if you gave money to occupy the position of a parliamentary candidate, for example, mm. then obviously when you're moving into the general election, where you're seeking to become the member of parliament itself, mm. something is going to happen. Okay, thank you. There's a law that says uh, it calls it treating, right? Uh, the electoral commission, I've forgotten the exact law, but it calls it treating. So anyway, the, this conversation comes back and for me, I like to ask those who hold positions like yourself, MPs, do you bring these things upon yourselves by the things you say on the campaign platform and that when you get in there now you have to, to satisfy certain people because of what you have said in the past? If not, they will hold your feet to the fire when the next election comes. What is it? You know, to answer your question, I will uh, take it from one angle. Mm -hmm. There are two positions I have uh, held. The, the first one being that I believe it is only people, I mean, not, not everybody, but okay. I think it takes a person mm -hmm. who is not selfish, who is willing to share, mm -hmm. who is willing to give a part, of, not a part, a whole of himself. Mm -hmm to take a decision to run for public office. Mm. Because you see, if you do not have those qualities, you may run for public office, but you will either not win mm. or you will not last. If you are not, because once you run for public office, mm. everything of yours is now owned partly okay. by you know, the people that you have put yourself up to save. Really? Your, your property is public? Everything. Everything is, is it's, I mean, if they want it to be used, you have no excuse. Your time, your car, your, your money. Everything. Your house. And, and you must be willing to share that. Yes, you must be willing to share that. If you, if you are, that's what I'm saying, that it takes people with that heart. Mm. That's, I mean, to, to do that. And the second point I have always made is that, you see, I wish, mm -hmm. I wish that there was an opportunity okay. for as many people as possible mm -hmm. to get close to governance. Why do you say that? Because the more people get close to governance, the more they understand and appreciate the difficulties with which people who are in these positions face and they, go through. They say you put, you put the pressure on yourselves. I'll get you there. know that I'll as get MP, there. it's not your I, job to I, construct a public toilet. I get there. You mount the campaign platform, you see the crowd and you say, Meba, when I come, I will make sure the public toilet is done for you. You are elected. The people are hoping for the public toilet. You are nowhere to be found. You see, again, I agree with you. Some of us do that. For whatever reason, I'm unable to, you know, sit here mm. and fathom. But... With my experience too, mm -hmm. I've noticed that sometimes it is more about expectation okay. than the actual promise. Mm. So for example, if you live in a community mm -hmm. and one or two people come to you okay. for help, for example, to pay their fees, mm. and you are able to do it, the next time you are running for public office, mm. Don't be surprised that those people who you have helped mm -hmm. are likely to testify that you are such a kind person okay. who, when given opportunity, will help. Mm -hmm. Now, that generates 
a certain level of expectation even before you say it. Okay. That this man is a helper. So the, the, the expectation is that when they put you in that position that you are looking for, mm -hmm. you will in return do what? Offer the help. So even so, for example, you go into a community, Johnny, in the course of your campaign, and you find a need. For example, the people, like you have said, mm. have a need when it comes to the place of convenience. And maybe in your small way, because you really want to serve, mm. you are committed. In your small way, you find a way of resolving it. Now, the next community mm. will have the impression and the expectation that when you are put in the position that you are looking for, mm. you will do the S2. So, without even saying it, mm. that expectation exists for but you the, to but address. But that engenders corruption. You see, that is, that is, that you, you because, are even taking because, me... Because if you don't have the money, Sohini, if you don't have the money... And because of expectations, you have people who support you financially to do it. As soon as you assume power, if there's a contract to be given, they are the first to come up to you and say, you know, we helped you to do A, B, C, and D. So you to help us to do C, C D, E, F. I, I appreciate that. But you see, I don't want us to uh, take this discussion. Maybe it's another discussion we can have, but I don't want us to take it from the point that the ma majority, majority leader sought right. to make right. about monetizing, monetizing our politics exactly you know because it is quite you know essential mm. that we heed to that advice and especially coming from uh, experienced politicians like himself mm. i am of the hope that it will generate the necessary discussion mm. that will leave all of us better uh, educated I, because I remember, see, I remember that he he had particularly said together with uh, Honorable Albert Bagbin, have said that the, even the quality of the debate when they first entered, yeah. with the J.H. Mansons yeah. and the Hackman Oswajimans, the quality of the debate has come down because yeah. the President Akufuado and all of them were in the chamber yeah. enriching the debates and yeah. getting pos positive outcome, even in opposition. Yeah. So that is, a threat, that is a threat that our democracy is faced with if we do not deal with the issue of monetization. But in dealing with it, Johnny, Ra in dealing with it, it is critical and I have sought to make this point any time this discussion comes up, that mm. we do not create the impression that every money in politics is bad. Okay. Because there is no way that you can run any campaign, not just political campaigns. TV3, you run campaigns. Right. There is no way you can run any campaign of any sort without money. But if you can't show where you're getting the money from, that's the problem. Fantastic. So there's a need for us, because you see, if we don't conduct the discussion very well, mm it will get to a point where any form of money in any political campaign is considered corrupt money. Mm. But you see, if money that is meant for advertising, mm. reasonable advertising okay. again, mm. if money that is meant for, you know, logistics, mm. that will move teams from one place to the other, mm. you know, uh, uh, is separated from the money that is used to corrupt the system, mm and make us identify what or how money can be used to corrupt the system, mm. then we are able to distinguish between the money necessary for running a campaign mm. and the money that is meant to corrupt the voter and I, to corrupt I, I, I'm the, whole, my mind the whole quickly, system. Quickly back see, to, to the, primaries, the presidential to, primary, sorry. The yeah. presidential primary that brought uh, President Mahama back, mm. um, it was asking for a certain filing fee, 400000 or so. Mm. Mm. And these are delegates who have not paid their dues over time. Mm. And then suddenly when the 400000 was mentioned, you had people queuing up to say, this is my one CD I'm using to support you. Mm. So I'm asking, if you knew that the party runs on the bloodline or lifeline of your dues, why have you held on to not paying your dues for four or five years? And then suddenly when somebody comes up, you go and queue up to say, I'm giving you one CD2. That, you see, the, all of these things add up to, to the you monetization. You know, if we had time, if we had time... Because I if have I don't have 400,000 mm -hmm. and I'm very qualified, you have disqualified me from becoming a president. If, I had, if we had time, I would have uh, approached this discussion from three angles. First of all, our lifestyles as politicians okay. has a factor in all of this. Okay. Again, there is a problem with our internal arrangements 
in terms of how we conduct elections okay. and how we organize our political parties. For example, many people who work for the parties at the branch or local levels are not on any form of remuneration. Right. And so they consider elections as their, you know, if you like, harvest season, season, their cocoa okay. season. Mm. So there is no arrangement that is able to identify a reward system okay. for people working for the party. So if we do not find that system mm. that will recognize efforts and contributions at that local level, this issue of the people issue. during voting, right. you know, uh, uh, expecting, you know, uh, uh, contestants to, will, will, will persist. Then okay. again, then again, uh, finally, finally, finally. Uh, so, so I would, have, I would have also wanted us to look at it from the need that we have in our society, the need, because there is a real need. People are needy. Okay. And so when people come around and, 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 and create the impression that they can satisfy that need, it is easily for them to be swayed. Okay. Then the communal spirit okay. of, uh, you know, the, com the communal Don't spirit yeah. that okay. we have. Yeah, exactly. So okay. Thank you. these are the issues that Thank perhaps you. when we have time, it will be interesting I, I, to, I to, to, to look say, at. Say again. I've been dwarfed. No, you have not been dwarfed. I have been dwarfed. I think Nana, you, you have, have not been dwarfed. I would terms have terms liked that to look at the unemployment Nana, you have and not employment been figures. Nana, Nana, anyway, Nana, 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 thank you very much for coming. Most grateful. Your I like your I like your white shirt. It's, it's solid with like, flecks of like gold in there. Zini's, Zini's <laughs> as well. I think that the designer is Harmony Trends, right? Yeah, Harmony. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we will, we will send you people invoices. Designer. But thank you very much <laughs> to <laughs> me one of your uh, the Honorable <laughs> Alassane Suhiri is a member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency and Anna Damwa, who also speaks uh, on behalf of the MPP. Maybe media general should pick up this conversation and have one of our national dialogues about this, about monetization of, of politics. For, uh, for well, I'm sitting on media general's uh, <laughs> platform, so we